today's 3D print. This is something a little new. Um, a company contacted me on Amazon and said, hey, would you like to look at one of our printers? And I was like, no strings attached. I can say what I need to say. They said, absolutely. I was like, sure, send it to me. So this is the HWA Kung SW200. Link in the description below. It's kind of like a, um, it's got a, um, a Prusa build volume, 220, 180, but it looks kind of sort of like a Lulzbot. They obviously saw the Lulzbot printers and took cues from that in designing it. So we shall see how it goes. I have no idea what to expect. Stay tuned. to stop a little early and do another clip here to show how well packed this thing is first of all it's completely encased in two clamshells of sealed foam this is totally encased this is actually a box of foam and it had these on every corner of the printer so this thing was ultra rigid and strong you could probably bounce this thing down a staircase and it would come out fine i'm very very impressed with the packaging because this is not cheap over in china cardboard is actually very expensive um, they also shrink wrapped everything and also stuffed this full of bubble wrap. This whole thing, I was pulling it out, pulling it out, pulling it out. This whole thing was stuffed full of bubble wrap. And this is not cherry picked. This is from Amazon. So they have these stocked on Amazon and all they did was place an order for me and ship it from Amazon. So I know that this didn't come from them where they just packed it special. So this should be what everybody gets. I'm impressed. There are 3D printed parts, but they are very, very well 3D printed. I am totally okay with 3D printed parts. I do not have a problem with 3D printed parts as long as they're well done. Alrighty, so we got the parts all out. This is the bed. This thing is definitely um, representative of a Lulz bot, so they definitely took a lot of design cues from the open source Lulz bot, which is fine. Um, this whole unit will mount in between here and be pinched in by these little brackets here. Your connections for your heat bed and your y-axis this is the extruder assembly it is a modular like an entire tool head kind of deal except that there's no plugs so you can't really swap this easily you'd have to put your own plugs in but it's got this interesting direct drive setup with ptfe tubes built in so you loosen this it pops open and this opens up and there's your filament path that's pretty cool and it is direct drive and what's really cool is that these are adjustable you can, you can tilt these. I'm not sure why you'd want to, but you can tilt them. <laughs> Out all the way. Looks like the perfect position to me. I like the nice little small hot end. This should be very visible and easy to see. A little 30 millimeter E3D style fan on here with two 40 millimeter blowers for your parts cooling and your direct drive. Four bolts through the back and this will mount directly onto here like that. And that'll be your hot end. Uh, this is your spool holder. They actually used um, extrusions and angle pieces to make this. That's actually pretty interesting if a full-size spool will sit on there Yes, it will no problem That's nice. I like that. I Like the use of the little donut on the end here to keep the filament in place Although that really should be a little tighter So I'll add a little glue to that to make sure that doesn't pop off But that little 3d printed donut keeps the filament from falling off nice Inside the bag we have a cheap ungrounded cord, so I will replace that with a higher quality cord and we will also need to double check and make sure it's grounded inside here. Looks like a one gigabyte Kingston card. And it looks like a real one too. Little tiny USB cable, some zip ties, some screws. Ah, the, so it is designed to have that tool head removed because it looks like these are the screws to hold the tool head in place. So they're designed to be removed by hand. So they made a removable tool head without making it so you can actually unplug the tool head. Okay, so HWA Kung, that's something you might want to look at. Um, all you need to do is to put plugs on these. So have all these separatable by plugs. This way you could actually replace this hot end just by unplugging everything, swapping to a different one and plugging it back in. As it stands, you've designed this or you've copied. This might even be a copy of um low spot but you um oh yes they do my 512 megabyte card was a knockoff <laughs> no joke <laughs> it, 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 it was bad it was like 128 meg card <laughs> um but um these go into here through the entire printer assembly 
So you you have this removable tool head style unit, but you've made it non-removable by the fact that you can't separate these wires. So I will replace the heater cartridge wire with a small 40 amp Deans connector, and I will use a standard JST plug for the rest of these, and I will make this into a removable assembly. If it prints well enough to earn that. Yeah, no kidding. But Lawless Bots are nice. I don't think they have the greatest print quality, but they're bulletproof machines. They're just, they're tanks. Close this before I cut myself. SD card reader, cheap little, oh, that looks like an SD XD card or memory stick SD. So tools, and these must be the screws to hold the bed onto these here. They do not look long enough. They are not long enough. That will not hold the bed, but that will. But there's only one. Here's two. There should be four. Well, that's interesting. I'm not sure how that's going to work. They only provided... I'm pretty sure this is the bolt that's going to go through the bed into these screws here to hold the bed onto the frame. And there are only two. The other two, I don't think we need these at all. I'm not sure why these are even here. But here's an extra one. That's the one that fell out. So that may not have fallen off the printer. It may have come out of the bag. So we shall see. But I'm thinking I'm short two of these. I should be able to replace them, but still that's not the point. Let's see if we can get this thing going. Yeah, that skeleton skull is coming along pretty good. Make sure I don't cut through any wires. I do like the very beefy Y carriage plate. That is a nice, thick Y carriage plate. I should stop there. Alrighty, extruder assembly is installed. It bolts back here with the 20 millimeter and the eight millimeter bolts right through there. Next step is to install bed. Printer is built. I simply place the bed into place. It locks right into these little printed parts here that are bolted to the frame. And these four bolts with wing nuts on top to screw it down and the bed is attached. Heat bed attaches here. You connect the Y axis stepper motor and end stop on the back there and you're done basically. That's it. Everything else is already connected. So to build this printer, all I had to do was install one bolt to attach the screen, install four bolts to attach the bed, install four bolts to attach the hot end, and one bolt to attach the spool holder up top here. And that's it. That's actually pretty good. Um, well, we're going to run it as is first. We're going to see what happens. I'm just going to plug it in and see what happens. But we're going to have to run some filament through there. I guess we will use the Oak Tech Blue that I have here. So that will be tonight's filament du jour. Does that want to go off the back? Yes, it does, okay? So we need something else on the back to stop the filament from doing this. That's a common problem with this style of filament holder. So you want a little post sticking out the back so this can't fall off the back if it gets bumped or something like that. It might. The only thing that's, the only downer to me is the small build volume. Uh, we did not check. Okay, there is no option to set the power supply, so let's see what happens. Well, I had a bit of under extrusion on the first print, but I believe I've solved that. You can see the top looks very good. That's a nice clean Marvin. I believe there was still some filament left in the nozzle and it was a higher temperature filament so it had to get pushed out. Once that got pushed out, it was fine. I was also having some extruder skipping. But it turns out that this cannot be over tightened. If this is too tight, this is what holds the filament assembly in place. So this pops open and there's your filament path. If that is too tight, then the extruder skips. I loosened that, no more skipping. Second print came out fantastic. That is a very good print. There's nothing really particularly wrong with that print. But you will notice it doesn't have the silky smoothness of my typical prints and that you'll see that the skin has like a fuzziness where it's not that 
real smooth, silky finish. Good finish. No, no, there's no um, axis noise. So I don't see any horizontal or vertical banding. And I don't see any salmon skin. So that's all good. It's an MKS base 1.5 board in there. Does it have removable? No, it does not have removable stepper drivers. They are integrated stepper drivers. Um, but the print is a little fuzzy. Like it's a little, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's fuzzy. It's got a little micro noise along the skin. See it? A little itty bitty micro noise. I believe that's the LMUU8 bearings. They're a little crunchy. So I might replace them with some IGES bearings. And I'm also going to replace this fan with a quiet fan because this is the only thing on this printer that's actually noisy. This printer is shockingly quiet except for this. Um, actually, that looseness right there might explain some of the noise. Um, the shell, the fan, or actually the shell is just a little loose. That Just putting a piece of tape on there might have take down that noise quite a bit. Nice wiring, nice QC. Um, nice wire management. The IEC connection is grounded, but the plug it comes with is not grounded. Why? You have it properly grounded. Include the proper plug. It's probably a nickel more. So I'm going to tell them to do that. Um, these are 3D printed and bolted in and have thermal inserts. And that's how this bolts in place. Very cool. It's actually a pretty interesting design. The USB port back here has a nice extension running it to the front, so it's conveniently up front. Not bad. Uh, I kind of like this printer. Um, this seems a little, um, I don't know. Like it's, I think I'd rather have two of these on here holding this down. So instead of one bolt holding it down, I had two hammer nuts holding this down. So I'm going to get another one of these little angle brackets and put it here. So I have two of them holding that in place. Just, I'd like to have it stronger. I'm also going to put another angle bracket right here. So um, Sue, if you're listening, take another one of these right here and put it right here, the flat side facing this way towards the spool. The reason for that is to prevent the spool from doing this, which would result in a bad day for your print, okay? So if you just take one of these and put it right here, standing straight up, that'll stop the spool from coming this way. I would also like to see a second one of these right here so that it has two mounting points to the rail. I think that would be a good idea. Overall though, I do like the printer. I think it's a very, very rugged, well-built printer. And I plan to put a one millimeter nozzle on this and use this for fabricating household parts. If I need a bracket, a hold down, a clamp or something like that to in the house where, you know, the surface finish is not super critical, but you want accuracy and reliability, I think this printer has the potential. I did have a problem getting the Z axis to level. It keeps, it seems to be floating on me. And I believe that is because this coupler is destroyed. This coupler is all twisted up and the Z-Rod is bent. But because they correctly left the Z-Rod float, so the Z-Rod is not constrained up here, see? It just sits there. So because it's not constrained, the bent Z-Rod does not result in Z-banding. As you can see, it's a perfectly good print. So I'll have them send me a replacement coupler in Z-Rod because these are bent. And um, that should fix the inconsistent bed level. Otherwise, not bad. I think I'm going to like this machine. I mean, it's not as cheap as an Ender 3, but considering how well it's built, it's not bad. I think I forgot, did you? No. No, no, no. This one is articulated. Yeah, so you get... We're going to hold the plastic, and we're going to pull the arm away from the plastic. I didn't forget. <laughs>